Hi all, sorry for the delay to start. I have some problems in the laptop with the web application file we should use to the demonstration. Uh, well, who am I? My name is Wendell. I work in information technology more than 10 years. I work for a company in Brazil called Security Labs. We work for a credit card company, government, and the other big companies in Brazil. I'm affiliated to Hackaholic, which is an international group of security research. Um, I had been working with penetration testing the last three years. I had discovered some vulnerabilities in webmails, like open webmail, webmail, and the others. Access points like the link, uh, Citrix Metaframe, and the other softwares. I wrote some tools that was used in some magazines famous around the world, like Hacking9 uh, and the PC World. I also spoke to some conferences very famous in Brazil, like Hackers to Hackers Conference, Code Breakers, and was invited to speaker to others, like IT Underground in Italy and the It One Take One Mexico. Well, I am from Brazil. slide speak by itself. <laughs> yes, when I arrived here, everybody speak to me about Brazil. Oh, are you from Brazil? Soccer, what do you think about the next games? All this stuff. So, yes, I'm from Brazil, the city of Pelé, and the slides again speak by itself. <laughs> well, what do you see in this presentation? Uh, what is the WAF we are speaking about? type of operations, common topology, passive and reactive mode, tricks to detect off systems, tricks to fingerprint off systems, generic ev uh, evasion techniques, specific techniques to evade the off systems, and what they fail to protect. Well, we have a small description retrieved from the Web Application Security Consourcing Glossary that basically say, that uh, web application files are a kind of files specific to layer seven applications in the ca in the case to the web application that try to to protect the application from hostility attacks in the specific layer. Well, they are also called deep packet inspection files because they look every request and they are able to look response looking for problems in HTTP, HTTPS, uh, SOAP, uh, XML, uh, services, uh, web services, and the others. Uh, some web application files look to signature attacks, like you see in many files, and they also uh, abnormal contents, be, uh, behavior problems, that basically are the same we see in EDS and EPS technology. The web application files can be either software, hardware, or appliance. And basically, uh, they try to protect a web server. Well, some notes about the definition. Uh, some new web application files can work both with attack signatures and the abnor uh, abnormal behavior. Some systems not necessarily need to be in front of a web server as most, uh, uh, where in most uh, places we custom to see. They can be directly put in the machine where the web server is running. There is not the only, as described in some older documentations that are really used as reference, able to detect only attacks in the incoming packets. It's able to detect attacks in inbound and the, out, and the outbound packets. Basically, there are three types of operation modes. They are negative modes that are based in a kind of blacklist. They are positive modes with a, a kind of whitelist based. And mixed mode, that's what uh, most uh, famous web application in nowadays use. Uh, a kind of a negative mode and a kind of positive mode. Well, 
Negative Security Model, Recognize Attack by Relaying a Database of Expected Attack Signatures, like most of the EDS and EPS that we have, that we have today on the market. Example, for example, look for any page or any argument with the user input match any potential cross-site scripting strings. This can be, for example, strings, string dot from char code, and the, uh, a combination of all these strings. Well, the, the good point of this kind of uh, operation mode is that it's very fast to install and use. Basically, you have a pre-built group of rules that try to detect the most common attacks. So you basically get an appliance or a software, install, and this is running. The bad point is it's so generic, so in general you have a, a high number of false positives, more time to process, and also a small number of protection. Positive security model also. Uh, basically, it's a kind of enforcement of the, the application logic. For example, if you have a script called the news.jsp and it has a, a field called the ID of identification that you only accept numbers from number 0 to number 10 and you always starting from number 0 and going to 65535, Basically, they construct a kind of rule that only allow this kind of data, this kind of digit, start from this number to this number, and no, no other, no, all, all other data will be exceptions and not be processed. Well, by the nature of the the rule, that's much more small and uh, it's much more fast and have better performance, and they also provide less false positives when you have good rules. Uh, the beds are, it takes much more time to implement. Some uh, web application files in the market provide some tools to automatically generate this kind of rules. Uh, what they call, call in general automatic learning mode or similar name. This kind of stuff is good and they are helping a lot in generating these rules. The big problem is that this rule is, n is never perfect and it should work automatically. They need the basic. To, to have human reviews, else they will also be so leaky in a fashion that doesn't generate a lot of false positives. And it make the attacker's life much more easy. Well, the mixed, modes, mix, mixed mode is, is basically the use of positive and negative models together, with, which is happening most of the today's web application file. However, in general, all have one that is predominant, negative or positive model. Well, in general, WAF systems can be used in three different network topologies, between a web server and a web client. This is the most common that we see in the internet also, which people call like a reverse proxy. We have a web application file in a reverse proxy, an uh, appliance or a machine that is seated between the web client and the web server. The second is integrated in the all web server, which is more common in small companies. And the third option that's not so common, that's directly connected in the switch in port mirror span or happy that there are other asynchronous names to the same that basically get a copy of all the data that a network that, that a port get it's replied to another one when it's running the WAF system. Well, passive or reactive? Most WAF systems work both passive and reactive mode. In general, in the first days they are running in passive mode to identify false positives, and in special when you are using some kind of automatic learning mode technology to detect this kind of, uh, of problems and fix before put it in a uh, production environment. In general, when it's running 
very well with dot generate false positives, it starts to run in reactive mode. Well, a little back from Brazil. Here we have some famous guys from Brazil that probably all should be. The second thing that everybody asks me when I arrived here, hey, and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, what happened? It really works, blah, blah. That's the answer. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu really works. We can see Anderson Silva, Royce Grace, Rodrigo Minotauro, and many others. Well, here we have some tricks to the fat WAF systems. Well, uh, WAF systems leave several points that can be used that permit us to detect them. Example, cooks. We have an example of a Citrix Net Scholar. Citrix Net Scholar, some case, had a uh, cook in the application that allow us to detect its running. As we can see, in the, in the cook field, we have NES, that is a, a synchron of a Net Scholar, underlying AF and the other names. This kind of a cookie allows us to identify this kind of system. We can see in a, in a real life site. Here, this site is a real site on the internet and using Netscaler from Citrix. We can see the cooks it added to the application and consequently allow us to detect the presence of the web application file. It is a common example of seeing or pointing that the, the web application files add and should never happen since it should be stealth to the attackers. Header rewrite. Some uh, WAF products allow rewriting of HTTP headers. The most common is the server field. What happens? Sometimes, some web application files, when you requ request a normal and valid URI or URL, uh, they respond with a valid, a valid 200 code, and the server field is set for the name of web server, or Apache, uh, Internet Information Service, whatever. However, some products, when we request an invalid uh, or hostile URL or URI, it is simply remo remove the server field. So it's a thing that we can identify that there are some system that can be a WAF that is protecting the site. And also some others WAF applications only override or allow the reader rewrite when we send some bad content. For example, requesting a, a hostility content. Below we have example. A valid and non-hostility request should return a 200 OK status code and with the server, that is the real server content, Apache 2.2.9 running in Unix. Within the same server, we request a hostile request, for example, uh, a well now web, uh, web exploit that this web application trigger. We can get the following response. The server was changed to Netscape Enterprise 4.0. So it's another problem in some web application products. They only apply the HTTP, the, HTTP, the header rewrite in some circumstances that allow us to identify their presence too. Some uh, WAF vendors return different HTTP response error codes in the same URL, val uh, valid one or not. If you insert a hostile parameter, for example, just to be more clear, since my English is far away to be good, uh, suppose we had uh, not in this case, uh, for example, a page uh, no is index. Ponto php dot 
uh, id igual a uh, one, two, three. For example, it's a kind of a, suppose, valid request and this process it. If we put in the same request that you always return the code 200, for example, uh, it should be processed okay. If we just change the one, two, three to something like uh, pipeline ID or ID that is still content, in general, people trying to execute the operating system command, this can return for us a different HTTP response code. For example, uh, 404 as if the page index.php doesn't exist, which is not true. So we can, we can be sure that it's not the content of the web server and the application in the middle, like a web application firewall. Also, the same will happen if you request parameters that doesn't exist. For example, uh, no exist, uh, and the same parameters. It will return, in general, errors. Four two four four two three uh, five o oh, o oh, and the other. So this kind of uh, of uh, of uh, returns can help us to ident to identify the web application files. Here is a valid example that was used in one of the application files we we tested. A valid request with a stilt parameter that doesn't exist returned a uh, five o oh, one status code method not implemented, for sure, it's not valid. And also we could note that the options, sorry, the allow was changed because the allow option of this HTTP header in the normal request never, re never returned the trace option. So there are a lot of small points that can be used to detect this kind of systems. Well, back in. Some web, uh, some web, some of the vendors provide a filter to close connection. You can use it to drop the connection, uh, block users, and they also have uh, the possibility to interact with files, external files. Well, mod security is a common example. They have a, a filter called the drop action that immediately initiates a connection close action using a thin packet. Attackers can launch well now attacks that uh, mismatch the, the built in rules from mod security and analyze the back to the thin packets and it try to identify the presence of a, of a web application firewall possibility uh, mod security. This kind of filter is not available in old, older versions of mod security. Some of these techniques we are using to identify web application files can be used also to identify intrusion prevention systems that are available on the market. What more about Brazil? Well, back. Uh, tricks to fingerprint WAF systems. All WAF systems have a built-in group of rules in negative mode that are that rule is based in blacklist that you spoke on the start of the presentation. These rules are different in each product. These rules can be specific to a well now vulnerability. For example, the old EES Unicode attack can be a generic rule for a well now class of vulnerability like SQL injection, cross-site scripting, and the others. And in general, these rules are associated with the action, like drop the request, redirect to another page, etc. Well. Attackers can create a set of attacks that test for a range of vulnerabilities, a range of vulnerabilities that most of system protects against or not. In this way, we are able to identify building rules of a product and, cons and consequently what product it is. What it means? We can generate uh, a database of a, a big variant of a, 
web application attacks that some web application firewalls detect and the others not. Based in the detection or not detection, we can identify the software remote. For example, suppose we send a request with a HTTP method that is different from 1.0 or 1.1. For example, Uzi, using 0.9. Uh, some web application files detect this and block the contents or return a different HTTP code or can redirect you to another page, etc. Request a, a content language in a method which is different from post. It's the same. It's not a, a, a valid request that all, all web application files detect, but some detect. Uh, where, uh, where, he, where he with a recursive path, even invalid. We can request, for example, uh, where he accessing, accessing recursive paths, even that doesn't exist. Some web application files will detect the recursive path using Unix notation or Windows notation. Also, it can be used to detect the difference between them. Request where cookie matches the CMD name that are that is also detected by the full by some web application firewalls, by other not. Requests where the URI matches the string or the, the URI itself, uh, USR, X11, R6, bin, X term. In general, we can create a really big database of this, this kind of checks and run against most web application files and we can detect based in, based in what can detect and provide a different response for us or not and in this way identify what web application file it is. Uh, more or less like we do, we do pro probes in operation system. Basically the, the idea is the same. The attacker can go deeper and create several mutations of the same attack using, for example, uh, evasion methods. These evasion methods can make uh, a well-known rule be bypassed or not, and these also can be really, really useful to identify more precisely systems, sometimes identify different versions, a new version for, from an old version, also, some techniques presented on the start on the tricks to detect WAF systems in the first slides can be used and they help to identify systems like the example of Citrix Netscaler. These techniques can be used to generate uh, a big database and as we've spoken, to create tools to detect this kind of uh, web application files automatically. Well, Generic evasion techniques. Today we have a wide range of techniques to evade EPS and some of systems. Most of these attacks works because we have bad normalization, for example, encoding, etc., and the canaliz and the canalization that the implementation in the WAF is does not work very well. Weak rules, the full weak rules built in in the WAF systems. We can see a, a big number of products in the marketing that have pre-built rules that are really weak and they allow a, a, a big possibility, a big number of possibilities of evasion. Evasion at, at network transport layer in some in some EPS and some WAF systems, depending when they are running, for example, if they are running in port mirroring. Well, here we have some examples of common generic evasion techniques. A very common generic evasion techniques to bypass some WAF systems is add SQL comments to parameters. In a, uh, in, instead of space to try bypass WAF systems and some EPS systems. Also use put words in case sensitive and the case insensitive to try defect some of these rules too. This tool is very common. Uh, SQL query encoding is common. We use, we use 
resources that the own database provide for us, like stored procedures, uh, etc., that allows the attacker to encode and decode data, for example, to hexadecimal uh, directly in the database. In this way, we can bypass some EPS and the WAF system in some cases. Double encoding, that basically is the same idea of the, the, the original encoding, but the, the seeing itself, for example, the percent is encoded too, so you add a double encoding. URL, URI encoding, like for example, Unicode forward, forward slash, that was, that was possible some, some time ago, don't remember exactly how much, for example, in the tipping point EPS, using this kind of technique, also applies to some EPS and some OAuth systems. HTTP, HTTP request smuggling, that basically is a technique that some attackers uh, use to create a HTTP packet that will be parsed differently in the back-end web server and the, in the, the web application file or uh, reverse proxy or whatever that is in the middle of the connection. IP, IP packet fragmentation in some, in some case, depending on of the topology, is possible. That basically uses the question of uh, fragmentation and the reassembly to bypass the, the same. Brazilian carnival that everyone ask, always ask. Probability all of you know and you, who don't know should go to Brazil to the carnival and you appreciate boys, girls, everybody. Specific techniques to evade, evade WAF systems. Similar as attackers can fingerprint off system as presented, they can, use, they can use a technique to precisely identify which, which restriction of a rule applies to a specific class of vulnerability. What I mean? Uh, an attacker can insert a hostility SQL injection, for example, to a parameter and is expected to be detected and the action taken. For example, a different HTTP error code be returned, uh, a page redirection, etc. Or simply uh, generate a error code or the, the normal page be displayed, depending on of the web application file. The, the, big, the big point is we can try a high number of different hostility queries and discover exactly what SQL query is blocked and which is not. What word, for example, select, from, where, uh, exec, uh, uh, xp, underline, exec, and the other query are used. If we are able to, to detect these strings that are used by the web application file to built in rules, we can try to bypass them. Using try and error, it's possible to identify the combinations of these strings, which is allowed and which is not. Also, it's common we have a rule that is based on combinations. For example, only select is not blacklisted, but if you use together select, from, and where together, it starts to be blacklisted. So based, based in this information, we can try to construct SQL injections in the case to bypass the web application file. Also, also, uh, Also, this can be used to to deny. Uh, it also, it can be used to detect how the the rule was built. Let's get a, a real example. It not can be used the only way if SQL injection. It can be used with a lot of other attacks like cross-site scripting uh, and and the others. Real life, in a penetration test, we realized it maybe three months ago. We had a client in Brazil, which is a bank, that uh, had, uh, we had uh, made a penetration test before, and we, had, we, we got the access to the system. So they got the solution from Citrix Netscaler, and now we made the, pen the penetration test again. All we have to do to bypass the Citrix with the same problem was to identify what strings 
was blacklisted and what not, what combination was and what, no, what not, like in the previous slide. And then we identified the, the same query we used in the last time to retrieve a lot of information from, from the bank, we could use in just removing, removing the query without new words in the query, using some database query encoding, and removing all the single quotes. And the Citrix Netscaler was bypassed. So a lot of the systems that, uh, that people sell today that are with, with system are really good, but we cannot trust in the built-in rules. They are only, they help, but they are really far away to be perfect. In general, what are big pitfalls that uh, web application firewall have to have, have problems to detect? Cross-site scripting. Cross-site scripting is really hard to effectively detect and block. It's extremely mutable and consequently very hard to detect, in special when we, we are dealing with the outbound traffic. The outbound traffic have rules that in general can't be so, so enforced like inbound. For example, in general we get a lot of news from third sites and the older contents. These older sites or older contents can be hacked and used as a source to infect your site in the outbound connection, even if using a web application firewall. File uploads. Uh, many web application firewalls do a great job in file uploads. However, we have some tricks that's really hard to bypass. For example, when you insert uh, web shells inside the uh, images and call it, for example, via LF, uh, LF, uh, L, local file inclusions, via comments in JPEG and the others. Also, remote command execution based in server response is very hard to detect. Some web application files in the, in the last year, maybe, tried to detect some, some remote code execution, like, for example, the return that when we type in a Unix machine, the command ID, the command uname, PS, LS, they have a kind of standard format. And there are rules that try to identify this, this standard, to identify it in the outbound traffic. It's a good idea, uh, at last in the start, since it could detect a, a lot of people that had broke into the web server. But if the attacker had the access, he is able to execute command on the web server, it's not possible to really detect since he can use a lot of uh, tools that the all who encode provide in the Linux or even the all, the all shell like bash, you can turn it in, in Xcode, you can do shift right, shift left, and a lot of uh, encoding in the output that you will not trigger the rule. So this kind of detection is not always useful and can be easily, easily bypassed. Other problems that is probably one of the most hard to, to detect is logical and, uh, logical and design flaws, which is extremely hard by the nature of the problem. Basically, suppose you have uh, a bank and this bank have a, a place where you can check how much money you have in your account. It's common that uh, this data like uh, agency, account number, is passed as parameter. If there, are nor, uh, there is not a, a stronger check in the application to grant that your sessions, your cooks, is related with, your, with this data that's passed as parameter, Attackers can manipulate this kind of data and access information from other users. This kind of problem is very hard to web application files detect and block and the, ver and the holders in the same idea. Well, our time is finishing. We had uh, 10 minutes, it's over. I would like to thank you, all of you. Also, the site Hackaholic is looking for new members. We have a private forum where we share a lot of uh, stuff. If someone is inter interested, we are looking for new members. 
thank you all and sorry for the problems in the laptop and the delay to start.